straight on to the next session. I'm going to invite the panel to the stage, led by Mr. Alex Hoy, founder of Faction uh, Skis. This is where we get down to detail, and we have a super exciting panelist of entrepreneurs Thank and you. sports people, and entrepreneurs building technology for sports people, and sports people using technology built by entrepreneurs. And, and I'm excited about this discussion. So we have Alex, Giliola, Nicola, Liliana, Jose, and Kike's back with us. So I'm gonna hand the floor straight over to Alex. Thank you. How's everybody feeling? I tell you, you know, it's interesting because I, I don't know about, you know, some of these guys have been focused on sport uh, all their lives, and, and I didn't expect to become a, a sports entrepreneur. Um, but it's been fascinating because of the, the, a few things. One is that it's important. It's important not only to, to feel good and to look good, but to think well and to grow. And the, the exciting part about that is that the world's realizing this, and it's becoming not only something you watch, but something you do and you bring to yourself. And that, uh, I think, is one of the, the great things that's happening in our world. It's, I, I initially, even in America, we called it, you know, that's what the Californians do. And now, then that became more global. And yes, America still has a lot of very large people that should move more. Um, but we're seeing a lot more people being inspired by people uh, doing extreme or less extreme sports and, and then out there and doing it. And, We've got a fantastic group here, a mix of folks that are um, Olympic athletes, but also uh, people that are enabling other people to get out there and be healthy and, and build businesses around that or to be inspired by it. So we'll, we'll start with some introductions. I'm, I'm pretty humbled by the group here. Um, the, uh, the, 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 we'll start with... Giliola. Uh, <laughs> Giliola. Yeah. All right, everybody say that twice. No. Um, Giliola comes from Latin America, and she's inspiring over a quarter million people to get out there and, and do their stuff. Why don't you say a little bit about what you're doing? Um, I'm the cap founder of Baritech. Baritech is a sports medical club in Colombia, Peru, and Chile. We have 135 clubs there and uh, a quarter of a million customers. We, are sports we have sports medical doctors, physiotherapists. We're more like a regular gym because uh, we believe that uh, we have to give health and that's true exercise. And so one of the things, you know, it's the number one gym in all of, uh, gym uh, company in all of Latin America, the 18th in the world. Um, and one of the things that we want to touch on is the impossible and then how that applies to, to everyone. What do you think is the most impossible thing when you thought about your, you build it where you are now from where you were before? Well, Baritech is the result of a thesis in, in our MBA. I had a partner and at the beginning we started like everybody else. We went to 14 banks in Colombia and all they say no, no, no. I mean, a gym, a club, you study five years at the university and then two years in the MBA and you're gonna run a club. So it was like low profile industry at that time. It was 18 years ago. So at the end, my mom made a mortgage on her home and lent us the, the money to start. So, I mean, it was like almost impossible to, to, to start at that moment. It was the worst economic crisis in Colombia. Uh, it was 1997. And right now we are here. We're number one in Latin America. And I believe that uh, no, I mean, no other company is number one in Latin America right now in a, any other sector. So you have to work like crazy. Uh, I wanted to be an entrepreneur because I didn't want to work for anybody else. And I was so wrong because right now I have <laughs> a, a, a quarter of a million bosses that are uh, our customers. So I thought that uh, if you work for yourself, you're gonna have more time, and that's wrong also, because at the beginning, I woke up at four in the morning to open the club at five, and we closed at midnight every day. So it was like 20, 21 hours of work every day for almost a year, and then we start growing, and I mean, when you do the things right, Everything goes. Everything is it's like a river. Worth it? Yeah. All right, that's great. And, and a lot of self-belief there, and that's, I think, something that's recurring both in sport 
and, and business and certainly when you combine the two. So Nicola uh, works with a company that everybody is, uh, knows and has probably climbed on, uh, Technogym. Uh, it's the number two in the world, number one outside of the US. And uh, what is, his role there is actually a kind of a special one. It's, it's finding the next talent in wellness and health. Again, this huge opportunity for the world, both in terms of impact and in capital. So Nicola, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, some of the over the odds impossible things that you feel like Technogym and especially what you're doing is addressing. It's, uh, first of all, thanks for, uh, for having us here. I mean, for us, uh, for Technogym, uh, the things that are is really uh, always uh, motivated us, I mean, uh, the, the cause that you need to buy in when you work for Technogym is we are committed to uh, help the work, uh, the world moving. So having an active uh, lifestyle that uh, will, uh, will improve, uh, as you were saying before, any, uh, any aspect of your life, not just uh, looking good, but also feeling better and uh, being more proactive. So the impossible challenge that we started back 30 years ago when we started outside the US, where there was the, let me say, the, the, the paradise of fitness. I mean, uh, everything was starting from here, as you were saying. I mean, was uh, trying to move the world, starting outside from the, where everything started at this US. So we, we did a great job with our equipment. We reached the, the second place in the world. We were the first one outside the US. But now the challenge becomes even more uh, difficult. That is motivating people that uh, are not normally going to the gym. So try to find a way to, to make people going and become customer of Giliola. So that's, uh, that's our main, uh, main target. And uh, we think technology could be very helpful in this kind of uh, challenge. Uh, in order to stay together with the people outside the, the gym and motivate them to, to get more, uh, more and more active. To do this, we understood that this could not be done, done just inside our corporation. We need the talent that are outside there. And that's why we started a, an open innovation uh, uh, approach to this digital disruption, uh, trying to motivate entrepreneurs in helping us in achieving this uh, supreme goal, let me say. We are working with the, the top uh, uh, influencers around the world at the World Economic Forum, but we want also to work with the, the young entrepreneur. That's why we opened a, an accelerator in Italy to ignite the talent that uh, could help us in reaching this supreme goal. And so what I think is quite interesting is not only is it kind of a, a gimmick to get people to, to use the equipment, it's, it's, it's actually making people healthier. And then um, you've started uh, something that's focused on when people are losing weight, they're also generating food for others. Um, yeah, we have launched this campaign uh, together with Expo. We have uh, created uh, our, uh, our app that uh, helps people in collecting moves. Moves is the unity of measure how many more or less a little bit more advanced than step because you you can and calories because you can compare two people that do the same run and so creating challenge among them but uh, the more moves you collect so the more you move the more technology is committed to donate food and meals to the uh, underserved population so we have made an agreement uh, with the world uh, food program and launched a campaign that is called let's move and donate food uh, up to now, we have uh, donated, uh, from the beginning of Expo, we have donated around about uh, 600,000 meals to the World Food Program. Excellent. Thanks so much for that inspiration. And uh, Luyan is a special one. Um, it, it, the, the last time I saw her was uh, on the Mall in London in 2012, where she was crushing it uh, for her, their beach volleyball team. Um, so I'm a little bit starstruck here. It's quite exciting. <laughs> Um, but, but it's also a, a quite an impressive story because um, not, not only do you have to rise to the, the top of your game uh, in order to compete in the Olympics, no matter what the sport is, but in, when you're in a sport where you're not getting the infrastructure, you're not part of a machine, you know, you've got that, especially in countries like China or US, um, and build your own, you have to have a lot of that self-confidence uh, and faith. Um, it would be great if you could just tell us a little bit about um, some of the, again, what made you think that you could do that impossible and, and, and why? Well, at the beginning, I was playing indoor volleyball and I wasn't really comfortable because I thought I couldn't achieve my dream on Olympic Games. 
So I moved to beach volleyball and I had to leave home, family, friends, and was kind of hard, was tough. And I've been living there for 10 years and at the beginning was really hard because you, I left home and I didn't know if what I was dreaming of was going to become true. But I start, I start training and year by year we were improving and I start playing with my partner, my partner right now, I'm playing right now, in 2007. So it's already a lot of years together and we had no help, no, no money, so we had to invest our parents' money with the risk that if we were not winning on the tour, we were not playing anymore, like we couldn't keep on going. So it was tough at the beginning, but our coach was trusting on us really, really hard. Like he knew what we had to do to reach an Olympic Games or at least to improve. Because if, if you improve, the results will come and then we will have the qualification for the Olympics. Like, you know, it's step by step. So at the beginning it was hard because nobody in Spain had played an Olympic Games in women, at least. So for us it was kind of a dream, no? And in 2011 we had like a panic because <laughs> we were qualified for the Olympics. We were 11th of the Olympic ranking and only the 16th best teams were going. And we were 23 years old. We just started playing professional three years ago. Um, we were scared. Mm. We were really, really scared. Like, are we, are we going to make it? We are going to make it. And when we got to the Olympic Village, it was just amazing. Like, a dream come true, and like, everything was happening so slow. But it, I think in a lot of things in life, you, you, you see a summit, and you work so hard to get to it, and you get to the top of it, and then you realize that that's just the foothill and there's another one. So what, you, you've got Rio ahead of you? What? Yeah, like, yeah, like London was our first dream, but right now get an Olympic medal is our next objective. We are working hard for that, and I think the best thing is enjoy every single day of your career, like when you train, but also when you compete. And probably all people know this feeling, but athletes, we know we are enjoying the game when you feel happy. When you read like you, you, are, you know what your opponent is going to do. And everything is happening so slow, like you, it's slow motion, everything. So, so it's this concept of flow. Yeah, the concept of flow, yeah. exactly. And when you're working on the accounts at 11 p.m. trying to close shop, do you feel flow? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, when, when you were talking about with the impossible, I was remembering the, the book of uh, Malcolm Gladwell, Outliers. Uh, I don't know if you have read it. And, and when he said that you have to work 10,000 hours to be the master in something, I believe that you have to work 10,000 hours to be the master of entrepreneur. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, you know, whether it's uh, your serve or, your, or if it's literally getting the accounts nailed and understanding what it means, it takes practice. Right? Practice every day. <laughs> it's like, uh, like, I mean, it's like you. You have to train every day. So in your company, you have to work every day and you have to think every day. And I believe that being an entrepreneur is not like a part-time job. And if you are doing what's your passion, uh, it's not like an effort. Okay, I need to figure out how that works. But yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Jose, you've, uh, you've, uh, Jose brings some technology and sport together. It's a geek's uh, dream. Um, but uh, it's also hopefully revolutionizing how people can be inspired. So tell us a little bit about uh, First Vision. I'm Jose Defonso, the CEO of First Vision. Uh, First Vision is a wearable broadcast system that gives to you the player's point of view in a sport where this was impossible before, like basketball, football, tennis, any sport. It's a jersey with the camera on the front and then with the re radio frequency transmitter on the back. And it's a, it was a 
really crazy idea at the beginning. Today is a reality. We are trying it with the EuroLeague basketball competition, and we will try in a few weeks, in a few weeks uh, the proud with Red Bull in, in Austria. And today it's very easy to say it's, it's a very clear idea. No? It's not so complicated. But at the beginning, it was completely something impossible. All the people uh, say to me the same thing when I explain my idea. Uh, and they said, why uh, it's not invented something like that? Why don't? And I said, I don't know. I, I will find the answer. But uh, I think that this is a good concept and it uh, gives uh, a point of view very different to, to audience, to fans, to put uh, to them in their idol skin, no? to, to see what he's seeing, what he's playing. And it was really hard, but uh, we work with the illusion that we can defeat the impossible, and here we are, showing our product. I want to introduce to you uh, a video, because I'm CEO, I always uh, selling, and please, <laughs> let's find a video. So get a little bit of a better idea of what we're talking about. In life, there are two types of people, those who are brave and those who are cowards. The brave always look ahead, while cowards look behind them. The brave motivate, cowards reproach. The brave take risks, push and defy. The brave respect dreams while the cowards mock them. The brave love the unknown from the bottom of their hearts, while cowards have never even visited that part of themselves. since you've done something that came from your heart? How long have you gone contradicting your destiny? How many lives do you need to understand that you only have one? So not only is that technologically interesting, uh, it, it's, it's inspiring. You just want to get out there and do it and, instead of just watch it. And that's, that's really exciting. You got to be proud of that. Yeah, yeah uh, the words in, in that video uh, explain very well what we feel when, uh, when we are developing this kind of technology. We think that we are the brave and we are defeating the, the impossible. And we are, uh, I'm, I'm changing my way that I'm, I see life. I, w I was creative director in an advertising agency, and I felt all the time that I wasn't creating things. Because all the time I was uh, thinking about the client's fear, about my fears, and I wasn't do what I really want to do. But uh, right now, I think that I'm not a creative person, I'm a creator. And this is the, the difference today. I think uh, that all the people have uh, really good ideas, uh, but only one, no, only a few people has the balls 
Huevos, I think is the word, right? Yeah. <laughs> Cajones? Balls? Uh, I, don't know, I don't know how to say female balls in, in English. But, uh, but, Ovaris? <laughs> Ovaris. But uh, a few people has the balls to, to develop these ideas. This is the, the difference between... Uh, so that's the line between the impossible and the impossible. And uh, everybody got a, a great introduction to you before, mm -hmm. but uh, I guess what would be fantastic, uh, and again, what we're trying to, what, what, what I'd like to have people come away with the, from this uh, is, is a combination of where sport and, and the psychology of, of achieving the impossible start crossing over. And maybe it's something that, where you kind of had a breakthrough like that, uh, where you kind of went and had that, that crushing, difficult moment and then realized that you, you were able to power through. Yeah. I, 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 I always wanted, I think it's, it's like you said, you, you have a goal. My ambition was to be, go to one Olympics, you know, and, and it was my country's Olympics in Barcelona 92, and, and you worked for it, and, and you had bad moments, and you worked for it, and then you get there, and it's, it's a dream come true. But like, then, like you say, oh, but I, then I want to go to the next one. So I, I, I went to three. And then I had this moment in, in my life that I, 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 something happened, I broke my back and, I, and, I, and my, I was on the horse and I wasn't very happy. And at that same time, I think life flows and something came along. My husband said, let's, let's do a business together. Well, let's start a, a, a hotel. And, and it just went on from there. And I, I'm, I, I'm very obsessed. I think sports people, we all are very focused and very obsessed, especially. And I went from one obsession to the other. And what I did feel was that it, it's, there's so many comparables in sports and in life. Uh, goals, discipline, uh, what, uh, bad moments and good moments, and especially in sports because I, there was something that we, uh, the, the Spanish team was very good at for our Barcelona Olympics, was to, it's the treatment of failure and success. You know? First of all, when you, when you are a success, to learn how to, for, even if it's for 20 minutes, say, good, no? Mm. And then keep on. And if it's a failure, it doesn't matter, also keep on, no? We, were, we worked a lot of that in Barcelona, and I think that really helped me for the rest of my life, not to be very down when I have a failure, and not to be very up when I have a success, no? I want, at the end, to say he had a successful career, not one day, no? I think it's that's something that sports teaches you. Uh, there's always the next game. Yes, and always. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's focusing, yeah. it's humbling as well but it also wakes you up in the next day. Um, well, that's, that's brilliant, and what, what an what a inspiring group here. Um, I'd love to, to dig a little bit more then into um, where you think th things are changing for typical people in how they're taking sp sport and wellness into day-to-day -day life. And Nicola, that's a big focus where you've taken you know, the, the position that Technogym's been in and said, how can we have a bigger effect on people? And it's been through creating an accelerator. You've got over 200 applicants. they have whittled down to five. What are you seeing out there that, uh, as a society, are you seeing any changes? Are you seeing people taking health or, or wellness or sport differently in their perspective? Yeah, actually, we have to say that uh, in the last... Uh, Five years, there has been a dramatic change in this one. I mean, um, uh, and this has been reflected or driven by the technology. You never know if the demand starts before or uh, or after. But uh, all this uh, incredible attention to the wearables, you know, people start counting their step. Big companies investing in it, like uh, Apple launching a, a watch that tra uh, tracks. Uh, What's your uh, movement? How, how much you move? So there, there is a, uh, an increasing sensibility to this kind of topic. So people are getting more and more aware that uh, having an healthier lifestyle will improve their life, not only from, a, an, uh, from as you said, I mean, from a looking perspective, but also uh, you know, uh, having an healthier life and a longer life because participating uh, being, yeah being, in the being game. more and more participating so that's a, a, has been a dramatic change but uh, now uh, we need to do the next step i mean this is as a starting as a, a, a niche or, or is, is getting more and more bigger now it has to become a, a mass mass phenomenon otherwise i mean and this will have an impact on government on regulation a lot of discussion that we are we are trying to push but uh, uh, we believe that the, the, the tipping point has been reached, 
So now it's a matter of you know, scaling this up and uh, making more and more people aware. And uh, a lot will be, will be done with uh, incentivizing the people, you know, nudging them and making the choice. At the end gamifying of, it. Yeah, gamifying all this. Because at the end of the day, if you really want to, to break through it, you, you need to make that uh, the healthy lifestyle, the active lifestyle, should be the default choice. Today it's... Uh, Do you think it's more the, the, the psychology of, of, the, of the game, or is, there, is it the end goal? I need to... You know, the problem that you normally have with this kind of uh, topics is that the reward is uh, too, too long down the line. I mean, you need to believe in something that is going to be healthier for you in 20 years down the line or 50 years down the line when you get older and you, you, are, uh, you are reaching a more critical phase of your life. So sometimes uh, you need to, to create incentives that shorten this uh, uh, pay, payback period. And that's, that's what we look at. So, you know, engage them with the challenge that, you know, put you, uh, ch uh, you know, everyone uh, likes to, you know, challenge someone else. And so these are the kind of things that make this uh, payoff a little bit shorter so people believe in it and start moving. Once you are engaged, then it's done. I mean, once you are engaged, you, you start feeling that it's good for you and you keep going. Excellent. And so you're at a quarter million uh, people using your gym, a quarter million bosses uh, kind of telling you what, what, what you're doing right and wrong. Uh, what do you consider the payback uh, that that is satisfying to you? What what gets what makes you can I say what's the next summit? What's the next level? I believe that um, my motivation has changed on time because at the beginning it was my motivation was that I wanted to work for myself. Then I changed and my motivation was that I had to pay my mom the money that she. Uh, get from, from the bank. Then it changed to our employees. So right now we have 4,500 employees in our company. So if you have an average of three or four people per family, so 10,000 people live from body tech. So my motivation was to, I mean, to give them a good space for work. And right now my motivation is my main motivation is give health to our customers and give health them to exercise and we want that people have a better life and we can help uh, people to be to have a better life through exercise that's our motivation right now and we believe that we have a mantra in our company is that you success is 10 percent inspiration and 90 percent perspiration Ideas, I mean, you can have thousand ideas. Yesterday I was listen, listening to some of the speakers and yesterday I have like 10 ideas of business, but from an idea to a really business is a long way. So it's not just ideas. Everybody wants the shortcut, everybody wants the secret. Yeah. <laughs> but Top there is no secret. The secret it's is hard. work I'm, hard, I'm, work I'm hard and have discipline. I'm a client of yours, I'm one of your bosses, and she has the best gyms in the world, I have to say. They are <laughs> amazing. Fantastic. What makes them special? I mean, well, listen, it's the atmosphere that they did since the beginning. They put music, how they treat you. I'm a big fan of yours. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. huh? How about that? We have That's a good review from your boss. Yeah, <laughs> we have sports medical doctors, we have nutritionists, physiotherapists, and our trainers are all uh, professionals in uh, physical education or physiotherapy. So we care about our customers, and customer service, not in Colombia, in Latin America, is very, very important. It's like to be warm with your customers. So again, and what I'd like to now kind of concentrate on as we go into the end here is the take-home value here from this discussion. And, and so the take-home value I'm seeing, you know, here is, you know, what, what, what are you, you've, you've kind of worked around it, but what, you know, if somebody's working in, you know, some B2B software business or something else, what can they take away from what you've learned and developed uh, in, in, in what you're building in this kind of health sector? Yeah. I would say that uh, do what your passion. Uh, if you don't like what you're doing, if it, it, become it, a, if crazy, it becomes it? a nightmare, don't do it. Okay, but so are there, it, can that lead you to do silly things that are going to be low value over time? I mean, you know, you, you manage to find something that's, that's, that, that's your passion and that it's, uh, it's quite big, but is there, how do you make that trade-off between 
um, trying to find something that you can attain success with versus you're passionate about. B2B software is a perfect example. I don't think that many people <laughs> can be that passionate about it. <laughs> you, you have to sacrifice. I but mean, I, but if you want to do see. something big, you have to do sacrifice. It's like a, a, a sports person like you, a professional sports. You do sacrifices. You train every day. Uh, I don't know how many hours uh, like Nadal train every day. So you have to train, you have to work hard. So it has it's, to be something not, that wakes you up in the morning. Yeah, to do that. it's not that tomorrow I woke up and somebody from uh, Silicon Valley bought my company. It's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but I, for example, I'm a, I'm a hotelier now, no? And I'm, and it wasn't my passion. I just came through it by coincidence, and then it became my passion. I don't think I think you, passion. It's not something that's, oh, you wake up and they say this is my passion. It could be some people can have that. In my case, I, it was. I started the business because I thought it was interesting for the for uh, I was going to be able to make money and then I got into it more and then it became my passion. No? I think passion. you can work into passion. I, learn I, I really thought at the beginning that it was a, a speed uh, run and it really is a marathon. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm in the middle of it. I, I, I'm going. I'm looking back and saying, oh, it's uh, better to to keep working, but uh, it's a marathon. A right, little known fact, I started my first company uh, that we ended up listing on the stock exchange in London on Claudio Cuello uh, off of Juan Bravo right here in, in Madrid um, be uh, before we kind of moved uh, away. And we had a saying, it was, you know, this is a sprint and a marathon. <laughs> 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 you have to run fast and you have to run far. But, but sure. you have to make sure you can run far. Go ahead. For sure you have to fail. Yeah. You have to fail because otherwise you don't learn. Like we had to lose so many games, so many points because beach volleyball is like tennis or you win the point or you lose the point. So you need to accept the mistake and work on it. And at the beginning you are working maybe on your body, on your technique. But when you start winning, it's not about this because all the players know how to receive, how to hit or how to block. It's about mentally. Hmm. It's all about this. It's all about attitude, believe, and patience, and keep on going. It's just keep on going. <laughs> and again, I guess you know when you were starting, you and your 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 partner had to focus on getting better and building both physical and mental yeah. toughness. And, and but then as you got to the Olympics, became one of very few of seven billion people been able to kind of hit that stage. Um, there must have been, just like with, uh, with, with Giulia. <laughs> Giulia. <laughs> um, that kind of moment where you realize the motivations change a little bit, things are a little bit different, and you're actually having an impact on more people. What kind of things have you been able to see with that that the affect mere mortals and not Olympians that that you've been able to to, to learn from, or inspire? I think at the beginning we didn't realize because like we were doing something historic for our country but at the same time was something historic for Lily and Elsa like something new for us so we just wanted to do it well for us and after the Olympics we realized how big what that what happened there was because we were in every single newspaper, on TV, everybody was talking about beach volleyball. And I think that's great. And from then, a lot of beach volleyball clubs, a lot of you know, players are starting now to play beach volleyball. And we, we need to take that and make a good structure to make young players grow. And we don't, you don't realize this until you start achieving things. And some some people on the street g tells to you, wow, great job, or can I make a picture with you? I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> 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 like, yeah, you, it's hard to accept sometimes, but I'm not, I'm not messy, so I'm okay, I can live with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's an interesting time when, when you're, you have unintended consequences. Your, your goal is to do this, and then you find yourself on a platform to do something else. Uh, that, that's quite special. Jose, things that you feel like 
that you've learned in your journey that everybody here should, can take home? Things that you've learned in your journey to building the, this, this new company that everybody can take home. As a what I have learned is that you cannot accept uh, a no at the beginning. Maybe he's right and, and you have to accept it. And I completely agree that you are uh, failing. And what I uh, want to say that to everyone that is here seated is that if I uh, could uh, done this, this thing called First Vision so difficult, everyone uh, can this kind of things. Because uh, I was an advertiser, and now I'm a man talking about technology. And you can change your life completely if you are uh, combined that you can do it. That's fantastic. All right, well, I think that that can uh, summarize it. Be brave and get out there and, and make it happen. Thank you very much to our panel.